Hi, my name is Richard Devine, and welcome to my studio. Um, brand new, just built, and let's see, we just finished it, oh, I'd say, oh, about a week ago. <laughs> so it's brand new, and um, <clears throat> yeah, basically it's based, you could say it's um, a post editing production room. I do a lot of work with, on TV commercials and um, some work with video game companies and I do a lot of um, sound design for hardware sense, software sense, um, making sample libraries and stuff. So um, I basically designed this room to uh, adapt to those needs um, for a lot of the projects that I work on um, throughout the year. And this is basically a result of me moving down from a room that I had upstairs, was, which was much smaller, and uh, had it had its problems, and it was a bit clustered to work in. So I, when I wanted to design this room, I wanted to make sure that I had um, designed a space that allowed me to breathe a little bit more, and had a little bit more space, and I wanted to get rid of a lot of clutter that I had. I still have some clutter, but this is much less than what was before, and try to clean up the work environment, because I, uh, I work much better under those uh, conditions. So, um, my main desk, I was using an O2R before for many years, and I really like the language and logic of how that board worked as far as how you can internally route things, and the uh, routing matrix is really flexible. You can put pretty much any channel back into each other. It's almost like a digital modular um, environment in a way, and I love that flexibility. So when I designed this studio, um, I had the DM2000 uh, in mind because I wanted that same flexibility, but with more I.O. options, more inputs. Um, plus, it runs at 2496, which has been what I've been working on a lot of um, projects on lately, which has been a standard for a lot of my um, sound sound recordings and sound effects libraries. Um, so basically, I wanted to be able to take my MacBook or, and plug in and use it as a control surface and also use... Uh, with uh, ADAT and AES digital inputs, all my effects, my favorite effects processors, and run these really cool complex uh, effects chains and and processing paths, and integrate it all with my computer at the end of the day. I mainly so, mess with the Genelex. Um, now, I was using the Mackie HR8 24s uh, for many years, which I still have. I still have them in surround. Um, and then I... Um, Decided to use the uh, 8250 Genelex right here. I started out using the 6010s, the smaller ones, at first, and really loved those because I was basically had bought those thinking that I was going to be using those as like my portable studio speakers, so to speak. And um, I ended up liking them so much, I decided to go uh, up to the uh, to the bigger speakers for my main monitoring, and um, I was very happy that I did so. It's, it's turned out to be very... My ears are, are thanking me <laughs> on that one. So um, in this corner, uh, this is basically a collection of scents that I've collected uh, over the years, and these are some of my favorites. And some of these have been a result of me actually doing sounds for the particular company for instance uh the access virus um ti have done lots of work with uh with access virus um designing patch libraries for them i think i've done about 256 patches for them and uh, of course working on some of these um sound projects sound design projects they've ended up giving me a keyboard and this is how i've ended up with a lot of my keyboards like the nord g2 i worked with nord and creating some of the factory content for them and also worked <clears throat> with Roland on the v GT, designing some sounds for some of their Artist Bank series. And um, really, really love these synths because being forced to work and programming sounds for a company, you really learn all the, pretty much all the sweet spots of that synth and the functionality and what, what really makes that synth cool. And, uh, um, and then <clears throat> down here... This is a custom-built instrument that Glitch Machines um, from San Francisco had built for me. And um, this is called the Logic Bomb. <laughs> and this is basically a Casio synth keyboard. And basically you glitch uh, the sound by the turning these joystick knobs. And then here's the uh, the 
matrix breakout here that works with a parallel cable. And this is also a bunch of bend points that you could trigger uh, that work in tandem while you're playing different sequences and sounds. And uh, manipulating the joysticks gives you this sort of strange, chaotic um, cacophony of strange noises and digital bleeps and bleeps. It's it's an awesome machine. And, um, and uh, Glitch Machines has built me quite a few instruments over the years. A um, couple of customized SK-1s and some other various instruments that he's done a phenomenal job. All my uh, speaking spells that he modified for me were were, uh, were just amazing. And uh, still, I'm a huge fan of his work. Excellent stuff. Some other stuff, this is the uh, Highly Liquid Bend Station, which is a strange device here in the back. <clears throat> And this is uh, this is another one of my favorites that that I use a lot on on design projects. Um, also works with the with the parallel um, um, connection cables, and you can also time this and clock this with MIDI sync. And basically, it's a sequencing glitch station um, you patch with these banana style cables and basically you can sequence the bends in real time so as you're experimenting trying different banana patch cable points you can sequence them all in time and uh, it, you get some pretty wild results with this thing. Um, I have my TR707 and a CZ101 that's bent already for this modification to work and I, I use those uh, together and you get some really strange Almost like granular. Um, uh, it's it's hard to describe. It's not your typical sort of bent sound because you come up with such odd um, combinations with this really quickly. It, it, it's become a really fun um, generative playground of weird noises. Um, here's basically the heart of um, what I've been doing most of my work in these days. I've been really trying to strive to be more portable and kind of being less tied to always having to be working in my studio um, and just kind of be working on the go and, and having stuff that's more minimal rather than having all this stuff to carry around. So it's basically just my MacBook, um, my host of USB <laughs> peripheral stuff hooked up, um, keys and dongles and all sorts of things, um, iLock keys and all that. Um, you see my iPad over here and then my OP1 from Teenage Engineering. Um, really, really dig this um, as a controller and strange sequencer sampling manipulation device. Um, and the synthesis modes are great. Uh, I, I find it to be a really awesome accessory to a to a MacBook, or if you're running any kind of sequencer like Cubase or Logic, um, it's it's just a cool little device that just fits in your backpack and you pack up with your laptop and you know bust it out anytime and just start writing and generating cool ideas and sketches and then it, it, it works really really well or it works well for me. I have friends that didn't really gel well with it, but. <laughs> I guess everybody has their own perks with with pieces of gear, but uh, and over here I have the the Moog uh, Minotaur, which which I usually have USB um, plugged into my MacBook. Another fun um, Moog uh, analog. I would just say this is like my Moog analog base machine that I've been using with a laptop, and I love the port. Of course, the portability ability of that. Um, <clears throat> small form factor and um, very nicely laid out and it's got a really nice rich fat sound that cuts through uh, mixes really really well and so on the uh, floor over here <laughs> I have uh, basically my collection of Eurorack synthesizers um, and I basically it started out with one case then that one case went into two cases and that turned into three and then went to four and now I'm got a crazy bunch of mess going on and uh, so I'm actually in the process of, of building a big case right now we're going to design a new case now that I'm in the new studio and this will become something uh, much more uh, efficient rather than being on the floor although I do like patching on the floor <clears throat> which is what I've been doing basically for the past couple of years is I patch just sitting Indian style and um, I sit here and patch for hours and I have like I feel like I have a much closer uh, intimate sort of uh, experience with it, with patching that closely and um, having the systems kind of separated into different little sections I, I kind of link them together to do certain things um, but it's been a a really fun 
sort of area that I've been exploring and, and been recording and making a lot of new sounds. And um, I love that it's it's just so open ended. There's no right or wrong way to 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 patch up something or to sequence anything. You can you can pretty much do whatever you want. There's total freedom, and there's lots of interesting things along the way that you discover and as i call them sort of like sonic accidents will happen all the time where you're just like oh wow that's that's really cool i don't know you kind of look and retrace what might have caused something to happen to kind of recreate what what what's making the sound do what it what it's doing and uh, you learn a lot of stuff too and it's it's become like this this non non stop sort of um i guess like I don't know how to describe it. It's been, it's just a really inspirational uh, area that I've been sort of researching and playing around with to generate new sounds and sequencing ideas and sort of, um, it, it's kind of, I've been recording uh, nonstop actually since I've been using this system. And uh, it's, it's just, a, you know, after I've worked. This was one of the first modular synths that I had, fully patchable mo- modular synth. Before that, I had semi modular uh, synths, which with the uh, um, the ARP 2600 and the EML 101 and synths like that. Um, this was fully patchable with the Banana Jack style cables. My friend Tim uh, Adams had designed this and built this synth, and uh, I'd later bought it. And uh, it was just so far ahead of its time. And he took on the idea of the old Moog System 55, 35 series. Um, you got your three um, voltage control oscillators with your different, um, you know, saw, square, triangle, sign outputs. And you got sync switches and then a mixer section and the uh, voltage control filter section, mixer section again, and then your VCAs. Um, lag processor, you've got a balance modulator, multiples bank. Uh, multiple triggers bank too and then the envelope generator section and uh, then to us uh, two 16 step sequencers uh, uh, split into eight sequences per per side and you can run or stop them or sync them very very and this was built long before the uh, euro rack craze was coming out um, this was a uh, very, very cool. I've gotten lots of great sounds with this and has a nice, beefy, interesting um, sound quality to it. And uh, I, I constantly go back to this, or, um, to using this all the time. And, and up above here, this is a <clears throat> another analog synth that he built for me called the Chaos Synth. And it basically works these touch sensors um, that would change the sound. Um, this is basically would be the amplitude. This was modulation between both oscillators here. So you could get these really sort of chaotic, um, sort of like noisy um, cacophony of sounds. And there's two trigger points here for the uh, um, attack and release of each one of the envelopes. And then I have the uh, levels and modulation amounts for each knob, and you can set them to load or high. And then there was an envelope follower with also its uh, modulation settings could be mixed in from from the A and B uh, of both um, oscillators. And so you could get a lot of different setting of voltage uh, in and out, so we could use external and uh, sources to do more modulation in. But it's just, this turns... Uh, I've actually blown... A PA system with this 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 particular box. It's a very dangerous box to use live, um, but very very cool. This was this this was also designed, I think around ninety six or ninety seven. It's, it's fairly old, but it was a portable synth that I bring out for my shows, and now it's sitting here in the collection of all the other analog stuff, having fun, um, intermingling with this newer stuff. So. <laughs>